Oh, hey, it's you. Uh, Groundhog Day. Um, Bill Murray. I don't even. I don't even know what decade. Honestly, I've forgotten. But this is the Black Pill uh, reviews old movies. So let's go. Groundhog Day. Uh, Nietzsche. I think this is a Nietzsche bit. Um, what if a demon condemned you to live your life over and over again from beginning to end? No ability to change anything. No awareness it was a rerun necessarily. Um, would you thank that demon or would you curse them? And that is pretty sure it's Nietzsche. Like Nietzsche's check of, uh, are you, are you, are you having a good life? You okay? You know, and are you the person you would hope to be in retrospect? Groundhog Day. Phil Connors has a shitty day in a shitty town in the American Midwest. Um, it's a stupid ritual. You know, Groundhog Day. It's a stupid, stupid ritual. Something like baby reporters get sent out to cover to cut their teeth. You know, a pure Mickey Mouse assignment. Uh, Phil's a weatherman. He's an ambitious one. He wants to go national, make big bucks, leave behind the crew, you know, that he sees just as a, a bunch of, of, of chumps. The, the day goes badly. It goes badly. He has to interact with a bunch of dormies and losers. You know, his shoe gets wet. Really? That's the, honestly, that's the worst thing that happens to Phil Connors that day is his shoe gets wet. Um, but everything and everyone seems beneath him. Is he a narcissist? Eh, let's not diagnose fictional characters, maybe. And uh, but I'd you know I'd say he probably isn't because he changes over time. And I've never really seen a narcissist change uh, in any conditions, in psychiatric conditions, in therapy. I've never seen a narcissist really. You know, but he does a fair impression of a narcissist. Better to say he's the dad in every Disney movie before they learn the true meaning of Christmas. I think that would cover it. Uh, he goes to bed unhappy. Stuck in town because a snowstorm has blocked all the roads out. Unlike the irony of a weatherman trapped by snow. Um, he hopes to wake up tomorrow. There. And tomorrow, Blowtown go back to sleezing his way up the greasy stripper pole that is television news. Um, but he doesn't wake up tomorrow. Most ordinary thing in the world fails to happen. He doesn't wake up tomorrow. He wakes up today again and again and again. He's cursed to repeat the same shitty day over and over for a subjective eternity. Like, how long? It's hard to say. Like, he could maybe scratch a line, a hash mark on a wall or something, but tomorrow it's gone. He leaves no impact on the world. There's no way to know how many days it's been. Long enough to learn French to see what film is it that he goes to see? At the, is it Heidi? Uh, over a hundred times uh, to learn the piano, to become a master sculptor, and so on. In the beginning, he revels in quite a small amount of actual power. The way he abuses people with the power of foreknowledge would, in a, in a real person, not in a scripted movie character, it would tend to indicate feeling actually quite powerless. Uh, do you have four-year-olds? Um, would you like to be horrified? Uh, if you answered yes to these questions, play this game with them. Roll swap for an hour. Be like, okay, now you get to be the mommy for an hour and I'll be the little girl, right? Or whatever it, whatever it is that's happening. And see how they treat you. See how they reflect the parent role back onto you. I promise it's going to be horrifying, you know? For, for a kid, adults are all giants and... And, and, and giants who have all this power to tell you what to do and what not to do and when to go to bed. And, 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 they, and they, they, they can't comprehend that there are reasons for the decisions that adults make because they're not capable of reasoning.
yet, right? So no matter how much you explain a choice or a decision or a rule, all that they hear is do it or else. And so that's what they... And that's what they reflect back upon you from their position of unpower moving into this position of power. So Phil uses his power to seduce women, to try to make his co-worker, Rita, fall in love with him. That's objectively evil, you know. Um, but over time, over time, he sees that this petty power ultimately accomplishes nothing. He's still stuck in the shitty town with the shitty people on the same shitty day. None of his pranks affect them tomorrow, which is just a reset of today. You know? Um, he despairs. After, after a while of it, he, 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 he tries to unalive himself uh, several different times in several different ways. You know, he boasts at one point about um, all the injuries that he self-inflicted uh, over time. And he even takes some locals with him at one point. You know? All to no avail. No avail. He still wakes up today. Again. Uh, he, he seems to learn to be less selfish. I mean, he still keeps trying to seduce Rita with the using his power of foreknowledge, but he sees everyone around him, you know, for the millionth time, he sees them as if for the first time, because life is so boring that you can't fail to do that. He sees the grannies with the flat tire, you know, the kid falling from the tree, Ned Ryerson stepping in the puddle, a vagrant poking through trash for something to eat. That vagrant is important. The actor is Les Podwell. I remember if the, if the character, the old man has any name at all. Uh, I hope he doesn't. Um, I looked it up earlier and IMDB just says old man, you know, that old man could be anyone for the purpose of this particular analysis. I'm going to say he is everyone. Uh, the old man is the most important character in the story. Phil tries to make everything better. <laughs> and it all seems better at the end of one day. You know, he fixes the flat, catches the kid, keeps Ned's foot dry, gets ever closer to seeing Rita naked. But there's a darkness. The homeless man, the old man, he always dies. Phil feeds him, comforts him, takes him to the doctor, befriends him. Everything he can imagine will help. He learns CPR, you know. Nothing helps. It's just his time. I mean, that's an in-universe thing, though. Just his time. Uh, there's no such thing as it being just your time, you know. But in the end, everyone... Everyone always dies. Today, tomorrow, a decade. 80 years isn't long, people. Trust me on this one. The first 20 feel like forever. But after that, the sled acquires rockets, baby. Then, dead. I don't know what the filmmakers intended. They don't seem to know. They wanted to write a touching comedy. You know, start with a weird premise. Uh, see what happens to the characters in the situation. I do, I, do the, I do that all the time. I did that. I can't write anymore. I have to retire. Anyway, the results are this brilliant film. But for me, this is the takeaway. The old man dies. The old man always dies. Everybody always dies. There's nothing you can do. You can play pranks. You can be cruel. You can take. Everyone you hurt will still be dead later. In a hundred years, no one will remember. You can try to help. Be kind. 
fix flats, feed the unhomed. In a hundred years, no one will remember. You can't, maybe perhaps shouldn't, keep people perfectly safe. Freedom from risk is in the end, uh, it's a loss of agency. It's a loss of self. And death comes for us in the end, regardless. If you were free, or not, if you were kind or not, if you were good or not, thoughtful, intelligent, tall, generous, there is no future. Now is the only time that matters. Phil's situation is an extreme and magical and imaginary one where because he's limited to one day and has no effect, this is all very obvious. And it's just another day for another guy out here in the world. Of course what we do has consequences. For our lifetimes, for the lifetimes as though of those we encounter along the way, and maybe in the longer term, you're kind to me today. I remember that kindness later when I feel really bad about me, right? I, 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 I remember not the act of kindness specifically, maybe, but that someone treated me kindly and I feel like I'm worth being kind to. And at the same time, time wipes out everything in the end. You don't get to wake up again today and do it over until you get it right or whatever that even is there is no right there is a tomorrow but only a few of them only a few tomorrows so what will you do today you're alive today an agent Yesterday, you were determined in the physics sense. You did what you had to do because of everything that came before. This domino fell, it touched that domino, it touched you, and you reacted, seeming to act. But now, but now, you could not respond any other way yesterday. But now, the second you can make a choice, which will be what? Choose wisely. Because tomorrow, in the light of tomorrow, it will be the only choice you could have made under the circumstances. And it will be determine what choices are available to you later. Do you have the data to compute such things like fill a holodeck on which to practice every possible contingency? No, human, you are stuck guessing like the rest of us. I was watching, uh, I'm doing this cause I, cause I saw a breakdown of this film on Joe blow originals and I, I remembered the film and I thought, let's talk about this. And, and, and their narrator put up, uh, uh, Harold Ramis, right. Harold Ramis talking about this film and he got a call from Buddhists, you know, that it was so Buddhist and Christians thought it was so Christian and, you know, everyone reads into it where they are and what they're doing. I'm just going to do exactly the same thing. I'm not different or special. I'm an existentialist and this is a Rorschach test. And what I see is being trapped in the moment is a puzzle with two solutions. The first nihilism is ultimately lethal. The self is lost. Nothing matters. There's no reason to try. That's obliteration. The second existentialism is different. Ed, sometimes painful, 
honest, laborious, and for me, ultimately worthwhile. Is Phil an existentialist at the end of this film? No. No way. He still seduces Rita. Or allows her to seduce him. And when you have power, you're ultimately responsible. Everything becomes uneven or unequal. His day ends. Phil's day ends, finally. When she wakes up next to him. A more modern feminist take would make Phil's ultimate reward something about his self, not earning this prize of another person with her own agency and foibles and concerns. But we have these realizations, or at least we can, that nothing matters and that can destroy us or create us nothing matters and that doesn't matter i'm not acting kind toward people because of a reward i could earn but being as kind as i can because i've in, i've concluded in a meaningless universe that's who I want to be. I often fail at being who I want to. Because I'm merely who I am. And that matters. Because it doesn't. You don't help the old man because you can save him. You don't help the old man because you can save him. You don't do it because he deserves it. You do it to save yourself because you deserve it. One more thing before we go. The groundhog and the weatherman are both called Bill. The animal has no concept of weather or anything else. He's just a prop. Or maybe he's God, I don't know. But either way, no concept. No concept. Men put him on stage and guess whether he saw his shadow and pro prognosticate. Phil uses science to try to tell the future and is just as being wrong. But he doesn't see his shadow. Not until he gets trapped in time. He doesn't just see his shadow. He falls into it, explores it, tries to escape it before realizing it can't be escaped. Hell is yourself. That's, uh, that's, that's Groundhog Day. Um, thanks for hanging out with me and talking about weird shit. I was the Black Pill. You were a listener in the void. Black Bill out.